I've got a question for you. You've probably had a waterproof watch at some point in your life. In fact, I'm wearing one right now. You might well have had the Sony Sports Walkman, which was waterproof. You might well have had a waterproof camera. Why isn't your phone properly waterproof? Why aren't we there yet? Is it like the hoverboard? Science promised it many years ago, but we're still not there yet. Why not? Um, Only last year, Samsung was fined $14 million Australian for misrepresenting the water resistance of their phones. How hard can it be? Maybe it's quite hard. I mean, it's a pretty complex and expensive bit of technology. Uh, Associate Professor Ritesh Chug is a socio-technological expert at CQ, CQ University and has been good enough to talk with us this morning. Associate Professor, good morning to you. Good morning, Leon. Lovely to have you with us this morning. Uh, a bit like the hoverboard. Why don't I have a fully waterproof phone yet, Ritesh? I think I think the fines that Samsung and Apple have received over the last couple of years uh, are a telltale sign in, in itself. Uh, yep. they, were, they were misleading claims about the water resistance of their phones. And uh, I mean, the phones are water resistant. They're not totally waterproof. Because when we say a waterproof phone, it has to be totally impervious to water, which they are not. And the reality is that while I want to use my camera potentially underwater, um, that I don't want to take and receive phone calls. Maybe I could swap a text while in the pool. I suppose the demand for the fully waterproof phone might be a bit more limited, or am I wrong about that? No, look, the, the demand is there. We've, I mean, research has shown that a lot of people drop their phone in the dunny quite mm, often. Yep, yep. <laughs> but uh, there are a lot of um, physical entry points in phones that need to be protected protected from both uh, dust and water. And when I, I mean, these points include the buttons and switches on the phone, the speakers and microphone outlets, the flash, the screen itself, the the USB tray, the SIM card tray, all of these points have to be covered and sealed. Now, uh, now over over time, and especially when we start to use our phones, the, the water resistance decreases with time, particularly as these components deteriorate and, and age. And moreover, when, when lab testing is done, um, Leon, um, the testing is done under controlled conditions. You know, in real yeah. life scenarios, such as, you know, swimming or snorkeling, there, there are different factors that come into play, such as the, the speed of our swimming, the the movement, the water pressure, uh, the alkalinity. All of these are vary. So, yeah, I've got to say, uh, if you're relying on the waterproofness of your phone and just frolicking around in it to get your Instagram post, you may be yeah making a very expensive mistake. Ritesh, yeah. have you researched the best way to dry your phone if it does fall in the toilet? Absolutely, yes, we have. And, 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 and the best way to, um, I mean, there, there's a lot of myths around dealing with water damage. People say soak it in rice. You know, and I'm sure you've heard this. Mm. Oh, Ritesh, I think our line's dropping out. Yep, I reckon our line's dropped out. I'm going to hang up on you. We'll try and get you back. Mornings around Tasmania. Have you successfully sat your phone in dry rice um, and then had all the moisture absorbed straight out of it? Um, Please tell me you weren't one of the people that went for the microwave because that's not a great strategy, I'm assuming. Uh, The oven on a low heat, mm, also. Hairdryer, mm, maybe. I'm I'm still going rice. Not that I've ever had to fully dry a phone before, but I'm thinking rice is the answer. You're on Mornings Around Tasmania. It's coming up to 6 to 11. In just a tick, I'll tell you what's happening on the country hour. And just a reminder again... That we've got, uh, yeah, Alistair Clarkson stepping away from the North Melbourne Football Club if you're just tuning in to focus on his personal health and well-being for a period of time. It's really sad news. Uh, ironically, we're talking phones um, and the phone line dropped out. Associate Professor Ritesh Chug is our guest this morning and has one of the best job titles I've ever heard, socio-technological <laughs> expert at CQ University. Ritesh, can we talk about you for a moment? Socio-technological expert expert so the intersection between society society. i love it yep so it's the intersection between technology and society because we all tend to use 
we all we are all using technologies, but in different ways. I mean, a classical example, and I'm sure you've heard a lot about these in in the recent past, is Chat GPT, mm. and how are people using it, and what's the impact of its use. So that's my research area. Wow, uh, how is like are we going to need mornings presenters on ABC Radio in Tasmania? For another five years, Ritesh, <laughs> where, like when are you expecting that that my dulcets are going to be replaced by ChatGPT, just assimilating the news of the day and sharing it? Uh, <laughs> that's a very good question, and I don't think your job is going to disappear even for the next decade. If you were advice advising like a parent or a ten year old to think about how yes. the job market will change, what advice would you be passing on? Look, I think um, tools like ChatGPT and artificial intelligence are not going to disappear. And we all have to embrace it and use it to the best of our abilities. I mean, people are complaining about issues with ChatGPT. In fact, last night, um, Sam Altman, who is the uh, CEO of OpenAI, was um, appearing before a congressional hearing, and he is called for artificial intelligence to be regulated. So there are concerns. I mean, Elon Musk and a thousand other leaders have signed work to be stopped on AI. But the message to a 10-year-old is, you know, artificial intelligence is not going to disappear. Uh, and we all have to embrace it and use it. It is really I amazing. Use it, I, yeah. I use it as a virtual assistant. And I'm not shying away from the fact, I, and I, I tell everyone I speak to now, we have to use it because it will not disappear. It's really yeah. interesting to hear your perspective. Ritesh, we're going to leave you to it, but lovely to chat this morning. Thank you. Thanks very much. Associate Professor Ritesh Chug, socio-technological expert at CQ University on mornings around Tasmania. 